Item 12A, Council to consider, Council to discuss and consider action or propose operation support agreement received from the Riverside Zoological Foundation. Nathan? Is this you or? I guess it can be. Included in your packet is a, an agreement that we received from the zoo for the Riverside Discovery Center. Also at their request is their uh, budget, which is the second attachment. Well, I guess it's the continuous attachment, <coughs> the second part of that attachment. <coughs> and I'm looking for direction from you all as to whether or not to proceed with the <coughs> contract as presented, or if there are some modifications, uh, what those modifications look like so we can work with the zoo and try to figure out a happy medium if the council uh, so desires to uh, move forward with another contract with the zoo. Comments from council? I've seen positive steps working with the board. Um, brought that forth last meeting and was looking to maybe come up with a plan or a, an offer from the city. I uh, was kind of beat to the punch by this uh, agreement. I acknowledge the agreement, but I think that we need to sit down or trying to come up with a viable plan for us to offer um, some things in this that I'd like to see more of and some things that I think were leftovers from the last agreement. So. I would agree. Um, I acknowledge the agreement, but I think there definitely needs to be some modifications to it. Um, and so, I think we need to counter and go back with something that we can agree on as well. So. I as well acknowledge the agreement. Probably paragraph four, funding by the city. I have a difficult time with that. Uh, basically the entire paragraph. $350,000 for the first two years following the date of this agreement, and then after the first two, after the first two years, $300, $300,000. And then the CPI index, I, I think that leaves the city way too open um, for the dollar amounts and if that increases and stuff. Um, I don't remember which paragraph it was about the splash pad. I got a degree of difficulty with that. It's not that I don't acknowledge the zoo. Um, then I will sit and I take a look at the city's financials going out to 24 and 25. Um, I've looked at a zero offer, clear up to the $300,000 and $350,000 offer. We will be dipping in the reserves in 24-25, just off of projections. I, I definitely don't see where the city can afford this agreement. With that being said, I would like to see, you know, something go along with the zoo. It was proposed to me as to if you don't fund the zoo, what are you going to do with the zoo as a city? You still own land. There's still the animals out there that have to find owns. It's not like you just shut the zoo down and open up the doors and let them take off and run. 
So there's still some responsibility there as well. I think I'd like to see that in an agreement too. It's not just like a contingency plan, but what is the end game? You know, the original contract was to be out of the zoo business of the city, in the municipality. And if that's what our wishes are, it needs to be put in the, in the contract as well. There's obviously support for the zoo in this room. <laughs> We've seen that in a variety of council meetings in the last couple of years. But when you're sitting there looking at budgets, how, where do you come up with this money from? Do we start raising property tax levies? Do we start getting cell, cell phone tax dollars? Do we start taxing rest, restaurants? Do we, you gotta find the revenue from somewhere. And by 24, 25, that revenue is not there. If you look at the $350,000 mark, and it was either 24 or 25, starting to dip into $2 million in the reserves because of the $350,000. If you went with the proposal of nothing, you're dipping into the reserves, I believe it's in 2025, of $200,000. Now, if you look at the $200,000 mark, you're still dipping into the reserves again at around the four hundred thousand dollar mark. That's the thing as a council that we actually have to be looking at is do we increase taxes or do we start dipping into the reserves and not increase taxes? I don't know if we can um, actually rely on even the city's budget because we really don't have any idea what sales tax revenues are going to do. They could go up too. So um, I'm, you know, I myself think that we need to do something and we need to give them an answer. We can't just drag you along and um, there needs to be a deadline set for when we get this contract <coughs> wrapped up. Um, I, I don't personally feel like we can just walk away. Um, we've kind of set them up to, we're setting them up for failure if we do that. Um, I know that the plan was for you guys to be self-sustaining at some point. I don't think you'll ever get to that point. But we're gonna have to figure out where, what <coughs> level you can operate off of. And um, I don't know if it's the 350,000 um, I look at your financials and I see you're making a profit, but that profit's probably going for debt payments. Um, I don't know what those are. Um, but that's probably where the majority of your profitability is going. Um, but, and I'm, I'm not sure that I agree with the non-compete on the splash pads. I think that's something great for the community um, at the parks. There's people that can't afford to go to the zoo, take their kids there and play in those splash pads that you know would use those at other locations. But I personally think that you know we need to do something, and it may be for a short period of time. It may be five years. We take a look again, and then you know extend it out for another five years. But that's just what I feel at this point. We're approaching that 11,000. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't mm -hmm. want to be down to that 11th hour. Yeah, but they too have a budget that they have to manage, and so we need to step up and say what we're going to do so that they can make changes or do what they need to do um, to move forward. So I feel like that's the right thing to do. So 
I don't disagree with you. And I think I said in the last meeting, when we addressed the zoo, that the 350,000 for me was just not sustainable, not doable. But just look, you know, looking at the numbers, um, you know, I would certainly open a, a contract of 275,000, maybe a three to five year contract. But this, and again, the, spa, the splash pad non-compete, I, I think that needs to be under that contract. Um, I, I could not support that clause in that contract. Um, can I finish? Oh, sorry. Um, the CPI adjustment that you've asked for in there, I, I don't think that, you know, that that necessarily needs to be in there. There's no other department in the city that gets an adjustment, you know, guaranteed CPI adjustment. As Terry alluded to, you know, we're we're watching this economy very closely based on the hailstorms that we've had, uh, watching the sales tax revenues very closely. And um, so I would also ask in, in this contract that there needs to be an out clause for the city if the city's finances wind up in the ditch and we need to make some drastic uh, adjustments in the city's budget. So that's that my take. That's, uh, good see. evening, Mayor Gonzalez and uh, members of the city council. I'm Brendan Rice. I'm on the board of directors. I'm also the zoo's attorney. Uh, I was the one who prepared this contract at the request of the zoo president. Um, what I'd love to see is for us to get back together in those small group meetings. We had one with uh, Councilman Green, Councilman Shaw, and I thought that, that went really well. And I think that's going to be the best avenue towards moving this forward. Um, and so I'd like to see those actually resume uh, to, to start making some progress. In connection with the splash pack, that non-compete was actually in the initial city contract. So it's already out there. Um, and that would technically come down to whether the zoo chooses to exercise its rights to enforce contractual provisions. Uh, if, if we're talking about any type of waiver of the zoo's existing opportunities to enforce contractual provisions, I, I think that's probably best discussed in the small group again. Um, in, in connection with everything else, I think we need to kind of set a deadline of trying to have this wrapped up by the end of this year. We've already had an issue. We lost out on a $50,000 grant from the Keywood Foundation because of lack of clarity from the city. Um, the Oregon Trail Foundation is contemplating a grant. They've essentially acknowledge that they will not move forward on that until they have guidance from the city. The city of Gehring's looking at giving us money and they don't want to do anything until there's guidance from the city of Scotts Bluff. Um, so we need to to get this moving and, and I would love to get back together in the, the small group that we had before or different members of it um, and actually start working towards realistic negotiations. And I'm here if there are any other questions about the contract that you all may have. Questions for council? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. How would council like to proceed? Do you want to bring a small committee group back together to discuss the terms of this contract? Or just The small committee come back together, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I do feel that that committee was really stacked, so to speak. Um, Nathan and Nathan and I um, against a lot of others. And I just kind of, I guess, I, I, I personally that, felt attacked. I thought that it started out well, and then actually closed kind of on a sour note, and it just kind of died from there. Um, I can speak. Anthony Mason, uh, Riverside Discovery Center. Um, and um, Brendan already said some of the stuff I was going to say about small group council. That was kind of the main thing I wanted to address also. Um, in regards to some of the specific things you guys were bringing up. Um, and um, certainly, I, I think we'd be willing to reduce the number of um, people present at that small group meeting, if you like. Um, if you want to alter um, 
the makeup of the meeting on your side, um, we are fine with that also. Um, and um, I do think it's a good idea if Nathan Johnson is there, um, you know, as the, the city manager, um, and then you know we're open to whatever makeup of that and kind of discussing that. Um, that that's really all I want to say at this moment. Um, do you have like an executive? What's that? Do you have like an executive group? We we do have a like an executive committee within our um, within our board. Um, we also have a, a fundraising committee. Um, either one of those would be kind of applicable. There's some people kind of that cross both of those groups. Um, especially good to have present would be our legal, um, you know, counsel, um, you know, and beyond that. Um, I, you know, we just, um, a lot of this contract that was put forward, this is a lot based on the previous contract. That was kind of the idea was go with the nuts and bolts of the previous contract, alter some things. Um, we, you know, if you remember our last request we came in here for was at a 400,000 mark. You know, we were coming in and negotiating you know expecting this to be a negotiation and so we've come back with a, a lower mark than we came back with last time and you know and happy to continue the conversation um i know that all of you love the the city and you know um, at least appreciate the zoo if nothing else and want the the best for it and the city just like we do and think that we can you know move forward in good faith and and try and get something hammered out that works well for all parties involved uh, we just don't want to our big thing is we're just trying to keep ourselves from from ending up in a position where we dovetail down because as i've said before a big cut would not be the immediate death kneel of the zoo but it would start that downward spiral just like the last time 10 years ago when there was the big cut so um that you know we're, we just want to end up in a death spiral situation um, I'm here for questions if anyone has any Anthony, I just have a question for you yeah I really appreciate the way things have been turning around and the transparency of finances you guys have done a lot of what I've asked as far as like you know just breaking down some of the numbers so I can understand better so I, I greatly appreciate that yeah of course one of the things in the contract is obviously the termination of the occurrence of the following blah 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 but what we never talk about on either side of it, because we never want to be negative on closing the zoo, is what happens if the zoo isn't able to continue, they lose their accreditation, or the city doesn't have the funds to continue that year? How do, do we have the emergency red button or a booklet that says, here's how we're going to do it? I mean, is that just the, the elephant in the room that we're always trying to stay away from, or is that something that there is a way to come up with a plan to not necessarily go to, but I think that's part of the fear is we just keep throwing money at it because we're scared to close it, but yet we never, it's not close it, it's like what's the next stage? Well, I would like to think that we're not throwing money at it just to keep from closing it. I'd like to think that we're investing money in a valuable asset for the community. Um, there's a lot of people who love it. It does, you know, there's, uh, from numbers I've submitted before, there's, you know, the economic impact of the zoo. I mean, the city, for the number of employees we have for the investment that's being made, I know they're not technically city employees, but it's a really great, you know, return on value. Um, so, um, and, and so it's, it's not just the impact of the zoo itself leaving, but it's, it's, uh, you know, just the zoo being closed, but there's an economic impact that would also exacerbate, I think, and make things, you know, potentially worse for the city also. Um, and the money we pull in from outside for grants and things like that. But the short answer is, uh, you know, the panic button is, you know, is the private sector more than likely um, trying to rally the private sector as much as possible. But the, the problem there is so there's just no guarantees, you know, it's, um, it's also potentially laying people off. Um, it's potentially restructuring. Um, you know, we're already about as restructured as we can be. We used to a long time ago have a lot more employees than we have. The employees used to get paid better. So, I mean, we're kind of at kind of that, that low point already. Um, you know, um, there's always a little bit of wiggle room, but the more stability we have, um, the better. And I, I don't run too. We feel like we've got as many different departments down to where we can, you know, and we don't necessarily have the stability. So if we're on the same side, 
Yeah, and ju you know, just like you know, you, you're talking earlier about ways to increase revenue to offset costs. I mean, we're constantly trying to do those things also. Um, so, you know, um, in increasing, you know, revenues, um, raising prices, right, you know, we raised our membership rates um, this year and our number of memberships are, are up as well. I mean, there's a, a, a world in which, I don't know that there's ever a world in which we're completely 100% sustainable and off the city altogether, but I mean, we've got good momentum right now. We're making progress. It's not always perfect progress. You know, we've hit speed bumps along the way, um, but we're genuinely making progress. And the more, you know, support and stability we can get, the, the, the easier that's gonna be. Um, I don't have a simple, short answer to your, you know to your question um, we have contingency plans for a lot of different things um, the, you know the truth is if we lose you know what basically amounts to 50 percent of our funding overnight uh, you know then we probably are looking at it you know closing the zoo I mean it's again wouldn't be an immediate that day type of thing but it'd be okay we gotta you know it probably would boil down to me and my wife, um, they're unpaid, you know, with whatever unpaid staff are willing to stick around and, um, you know, help find homes for the animals and get them out to other zoos and trying to get the AZA to step in and help pay to find homes for other animals. So, um, you know, that's a nasty, <laughs> um, messy situation. Um, it also, it doesn't look good for, you know, the community. What kind of signal does that send to businesses who are wanting to locate to the area that that kind of thing is happening and taking place, you know? Um, like he mentioned earlier with that CUIT grant that, you know, that we lost, there's, you know, been other funding opportunities too where every time we're having this conversation in public and it's getting publicized in the newspaper, you know, potential donors are looking at that and, you know, that's money coming either from within the community as an investment into us or money from without the community coming in and being invested that helps not only us but the ripples it has. So it's, um, yeah, the quicker we can wrap this up and, and reach an agreement, I think the better for all parties involved, uh, just so we can do what's best for everyone involved. I think the agreement's on the count on the agenda this evening because it, it was brought to us and wanted to acknowledge it, but also I appreciate that. in the interest of you know just being transparent and, and asking other council members in a group session like this, where are they with the support of the zoo? So um, and all the supporters that are here, so they can hear it in a meeting. Um, you know where we are, where we stand, and what we're dealing with. I think that's important. They won't hear what's going on in those small committee meetings, but they can hear it here and now. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Any other questions for Anthony? I do have a question for Anthony. Yes. This might be out of line, so I apologize in advance. But when you're talking about other opportunities such as Keywit, mm -hmm. do they have a minimum contract length that they're looking for? Uh, I, the short answer is I don't know. The, the short answer is I, I don't know for sure. I think it's probably going to vary, um, you know, uh, funder to funder is, is probably the reality. Uh, they didn't have anything specific that they said. Um, and um, so it, as far as like a length of time, I think the fact of the matter is when we were applying for it, it was around the same time we were in here last time and you know then having a newspaper article saying that you know the you know the funding might not be you know there um, you know just scares potential you know donors I, I think they just want to know that there's going to be something that there's going to be a zoo there even a five-year contract I think shows stability and at least that like hey look they're supporting the zoo it's not gonna you know it's not closing down next year when the when the contract ends uh, so I you know, a, a five year, a six year, a four year, you know, I think the important thing is just get something, um, you know, hammered out. And um, I, I don't know, it's really just gonna, I think, depend on the individual or the organization. And uh, with some of those things, it's not something they're always comfortable telling you in, in writing. It kind of comes through other, you know, routes sometimes. <laughs> I, I don't think that, you know, before, other three council members that are here this 
see me and can correct me if I'm wrong, that there's anyone out there saying we need to close the zoo, it needs to go away. I don't think anybody's saying that. It's just trying to find a working agreement, and uh, so we'll move forward and, and get to work on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that, that said, do you want, do you want on the committee, maybe? And Nathan and Nathan, you want this to go? Well, what I'm thinking is make it a six-person committee. Nathan Johnson, obviously, from the city side. Anthony from the zoo side. And then for two more from the zoo side and two more from the city side, for a different perspective, say you uh, from the city side, you and Jeannie, on the committee, and then from the, the zoo side, two totally different people on that committee. So they have different perspectives. Just a thought. I'd kind of like to stand out a little bit as a zoo rep um, myself. I mean, that's up to you guys if you want to do it, but I agree that, you know, two gentlemen to my right here, you know, myself and one other person because we can't have quorum. Um, but I don't have any preferences to close to the page. But that, that's my, my thoughts. Depending on schedules, maybe it won't, won't you know, wouldn't work out. Somebody would have to go in place. But I think maybe we could at least start a framework of, you know, changing. Jordan, do you have a, would you like to, any yeah. thoughts on your side? <clears throat> yeah, I think we can have, um, sorry, Jordan Call, President of Riverside Discovery. Um, I think we'll do Anthony and, and Brendan, and then outside perspective, we'll have Katie Gomper, our uh, president-elect. So. We'll be saying four people on each side. And then, what, three? Oh, three, three, three. three. sorry. There you are. I was like, we're going to go today. Okay. So on the city side, Nathan and Nathan and Jeannie, or Nathan, Jeannie, and you? It's Nathan, Nathan, and Jeannie. Is that in the form of a motion? I would so move. Or give direction. Do it in a motion so that way we have it. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. McCarrigan? Yes. Green? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you all for coming to see me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.